When building a machine, there is always some level of uncertainty about which devices to select and how the machine should operate. Simulation Mode and Automation Manager 1.4 completely eradicates this uncertainty, as users can develop their complete machine, including simulating their PLC logic, motion control, and HMI visualization without having to commit to any upfront hardware or software costs. We're going to recreate the same program from our first project crash course video, and we'll include a link to it in the description below. First things first, download Parker Automation Manager 1.4 or newer from the PAC product page by going to parker.com slash emn slash pack and downloading it from the support tab. Once Automation Manager is installed, open a new project by selecting Standard Project and naming this project Simulation underscore First Project. I want to simulate on a PAC version that supports all of the PAC libraries, so I'm going to select the PAC320-C, and since I'm going to be programming basic motion, CFC, or continuous function chart, should suit our needs as a default language. Once my project is open, I would usually right-click and scan for devices to auto-import hardware from the EtherCAT network. But instead, I have to add PAC.io to the PAC320 underscore bus coupler manually. To do so, I would right-click on it and select Add Device. I'm going to add in a 16 in and 16 out module, analog in and analog out, and select close when we're ready. Remember, anything under this PAC320 underscore bus coupler would be a software representation of a physical PAC I.O. that would be on the side of the PAC connected via the eBus connector. Now, to add devices that would usually connect through the PAC's RJ45 EtherCAT port from the front, I would right-click on the EtherCAT underscore master and select Add Device. In this case, I'm going to select two P-series drives and hit Close when I'm done. Once added, I would map both my axis and I.O. variables in the same way as normal. Starting with the I.O., I'm going to double-click on my PAC I.O. module desired and go to the EtherCAT I.O. mapping tab. Since I'm going to simulate two inputs which will trigger relative motion in my X and Y axis respectively, I'll name two inputs Move X and Move Y. To name my axis, I'll simply slow click on each and rename them X and Y. Secondly, I'm going to double click on each of my axes and go to the Scaling and Mapping tab. Since I know the P-series has 524,288 counts per revolution, we'll want our simulated program in the same units that we'll want to command in our final physical project, which is in revolutions. Let's do just a bit of cleaning up in our project before programming. I'm going to rename the default CFC project from PLC underscore PRG to Motion XY and allow Automation Manager to refactor. Since I know this program is going to be calling MC motion commands, I know that it must be part of the EtherCAT master task. Lastly, I'm going to delete the main task since it is unnecessary in this simple program. Now for the fun, let's program. We're going to cheat here since programming is done in the same way as a non-simulation mode. But let's review what this project does. It powers both our X and Y drives using MC underscore power and it moves either our X or Y axis a relative distance of 5 revolutions at 1 revolution per second and at 100 revolutions per second squared, and does so when move X and move Y inputs are high respectively. At this point, we would normally connect to the pack and download our project. This is where the real magic of simulation mode begins. To start simulation mode, simply right-click your pack device and select Simulation. That's it. You'll notice your device is now italicized and there's a big red banner at the bottom indicating simulation mode. If you went to try to connect to the pack, Automation Manager also indicates that your project is in simulation mode and that there is no reason to do so. So to quote unquote download our product while in simulation mode, you'll simply have to hit the login button. If there's already a different project that's been downloaded to the Automation Manager simulator, you might get this warning. Just hit yes to override it. I'm going to cheat again because we don't have a physical axis to show you in this video, so I've added a web visu to visualize our axes. To start execution of our project, we would hit run. There are some inputs in my code called power x and y and enable x and y that aren't tied to anything. This is common when you're just starting to code and you're leaving tie-ins to other part of your program or maybe a future HMI that you haven't built yet. But of course, it's still desirable for us to test this snippet of code. Whether in simulation mode or running on a pack, 
the variable declaration window comes to life and users can use it to force or write values by setting them in the prepared value column and either hitting F7 to write or Alt7 to force. Now that we have our simulated axes quote unquote powered, we need to toggle move X and move Y to get them to move. By double clicking our pack IO and going to the EtherCAT IO mapping tab, you'll see that like our declaration window, it has come to life and now we can monitor the actual values of our I.O. But since we don't have any physical I.O., there is an additional prepared value column where we can force values. In this case, we'll set move X and move Y to true and use F7 to write to them. Both of our X and Y visualizations have moved, so our program is functioning as intended. If we're ready to download onto real hardware, We'd simply stop the application execution, log out of our simulation, right click, uncheck simulation, and now our project is ready to download on a pack. If you have any questions about what you watched here today, subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our other how-to videos, or visit us at the pack product page, or join us at the forums for further discussion.